fake news is not a new phenomenon in Southeast Asia. It has been around for quite some time. But the awareness among the general public has only been in the last few years. It is a worrying trend when it generates hate against members of a community. Experts believe that most of the time, fake news come from ruling politicians. They've been using it to discredit their opponents and critics. Southeast Asia expert Dr. James Gomez of the Asia Center sat down with me to share his concerns and how to fight fake news. Good morning, James. Good morning. Good to see you here. Mm, yeah, thanks for having me here. Yeah, after a while, it's been a long time. Yeah, yes, it is. <laughs> okay, so you are here on uh, a tour uh, talking about uh, fake news. Uh, so the concept of fake news has been on for a while, but uh, it kind of very much used uh, recently, especially uh, in the U.S. after uh, the presidential election in uh, 2016, uh, talking about the intervention, and President Trump uh, has been using this a lot. But what about uh, in uh, Southeast Asia? What is the trend in uh, Southeast Asia? What the source and how to fight that? Right, okay. So uh, you're absolutely right. Um, uh, the awareness of fake news in Southeast Asia really came in 2016, uh, elections here in the US, and also with Brexit. Uh, you know, the vote for the Brexit uh, in the UK. So that was also another incident where the notion of fake news uh, was quite high up in the agenda and created a lot of awareness in Southeast Asia. But I think the fundamental difference between what's happening in the US and Southeast Asia is Donald Trump used the term fake news to do reputation harm to the traditional media that is based on fact-checking right, fact-based media. However, in Southeast Asia, generally most governments, authoritarian regimes, one-party states, military regimes, sultanates, what they do is they use fake news to do reputation harm to their critiques. So that's very different here because in Southeast Asia, most of the traditional me media is owned by the uh, governments uh, and is quite aligned to government political viewpoints. Mm. So the opposite view really comes from alternative media and the critiques, civil society critics, opposition politicians. So you find sitting regimes and sitting politicians from ruling parties and other institutions using fake news to do damage to their opponent. And that's the uh, fundamental situation. Now, yeah. in terms of definitions, I think broadly, we can make two types of definitions of fake news in Southeast Asia. I think uh, one is what we call everyday fake news. Yes. For example, uh, in Cambodia, in Phnom Penh, you know, there's always fake news about traffic jam. You know, everybody's annoyed because sometimes you don't know where to go, whether the fact, uh, traffic jam is real or not, and you get caught up and people are absolutely annoyed. But back to what really is uh, the highlight is fake news about politics. Now, whether you talk about Malaysia or in Thailand or Indonesia and certainly in Cambodia, the volume of fake news is always about politics. Now, governments in Southeast Asia and Cambodia included always uh, talk about fake news and they want to control the fake news of others. But the problem is it is the government and the ruling politicians who are the creators and dissemination of fake news. And therein lies the problem. Because in Southeast Asia, many governments are introducing laws. Um, Malaysia has introduced a fake news legislation and this has been kind of on the books to be repealed. Uh, Singapore used the term online deliberate falsehood and it has passed uh, legislation to that effect. Uh, Cambodia uh, in its uh, run-up to the last elections uh, also threatened uh, to introduce uh, measures against uh, fake news. But then at the end of the day, we find out it's the uh, ruling party politician, including Hun Sen, uh, are the ones actually you know, generating fake news. Uh, and then when you look at the law uh, where it has been passed in countries in Southeast Asia, uh, they talk about fake news of others, especially of their critiques, but the legislation doesn't cover fake news by the state or the sitting politician. So there is a fundamental uh, disconnect mm. uh, in Southeast Asia, first in terms of uh, how fake news is defined 
and, and it's often defined by government officials, uh, always in challenge to their critiques. And then what we see in reality is these governments, authoritarian regimes and their representatives like prime ministers and presidents who are guilty of generating the most vicious fake news and often about their politicians and opponents. Absolutely, and uh, this makes the job for a journalist uh, much harder and also at the same time more valuable than before. Um, yes, so what should the general public uh, you know, do or be aware of uh, or how they can they check if the news that they are you know, consuming is actually fake? Because you are in the in uh, the region in Southeast Asia, you know how politics is being played and how uh, party loyal uh, loyalists uh, you know operate, uh, and some people would even the the consumer themselves are biased. Uh, if they support the ruling party, anything come from the ruling party, you know, would be tr one hundred percent true, and another side would be fake news. Uh, it's not just the state that uh, uh, spread this. So how? With this environment, mm. how can we verify and how you can we fight this so that the real news is out in the public? Okay, there are generally four types of efforts being undertaken um, by everyone concerned. Uh, mm. I mean, uh, fake news is a general concern. I mean, it's a real problem, and you know, governments, people, society politicians, educators, all try to find a reasonable solution to it. Mm -hmm. And there are four methods that are being used uh, in the region and around the world. Uh, first is fact-checking, uh, to ensure that you know, whatever information that's put out is fact-checked. Um, and second is the promotion of media literacy, uh, uh, usually through schools, through university. It can also be done you know, for adults in the public domain as well. Uh, thirdly, it's uh, uh, improving the scale of journalists so that we can ensure there is quality journalism and also to ensure that quality journalism is uh, more well-read uh, than, let's say, fake news. And then the, uh, the fourth, fourth really is trying to get the technology companies also involved to do their part uh, to, to manage the algorithms or, or to ensure that you know, fake news doesn't come up in the feed so much and uh, putting up more sort of quality journalism and uh, uh, good information uh, up there for the viewers. Having said that, uh, we also need to be critical about all these four measures because when we say fact-checking, we have to determine who, the, who is doing the fact-checking and who is paying money for fact-checking. Uh, you will find many governments themselves um, uh, set up fact-checking websites and units and they fund it and, and they are giving the government version of true, the truth, which itself is fake news. That's one. For those who are a little bit more genuine and really are independent and want to do uh, fact checks, they are often uh, impacted by the lack of resources because uh, fact checking is not easy, it takes some time and uh, most of them is staffed by very little people and sometimes uh, there's also skill issues involved because you know sometimes they don't check fact, they check opinion, you know, so uh, and the other challenge is speed. Right, because uh, one of the difficulties with fact-checking is you can't meet the viralization speed of fake news. So you, the fake news is already out and making the impact by the time you, you know, do the check and put the real information. Yes, you can call it out and yes, you can say after the fact, yes, that was fake news and it may have some impact and embarrass the people who put out those information in the first place, but the information is already out. Media literacy. I think for me, given that a lot of the fake news is around politics, um, uh, I think a, an important part of media literacy should be political literacy. Political literacy about democracy, human rights, and, and, and the real intentions of the politicians or the regime uh, on all sides to determine uh, what is really you know, effective and truthful out there. But again, with media literacy program, you know, um, it requires resources and we also need to know who is running the media literacy program because if governments are spending the money and uh, promoting 
literacy. They may be uh, promoting literacy on their version of the truth. Mm. And, and one has to be mindful of that. Mm. And uh, the, the third item is quality journalism and the truth. And, and, and this is a bit of a challenge because uh, unlike in the past where uh, good journalism was read by more people, uh, it had a good impact and influence. However, I find that quality journalism and good journalism is only part of the many types of journalism that the consumer has to navigate. So uh, now in our media ecosystem, uh, quality journalism, uh, fact-based, uh, verified information is actually a, only becoming a small component of the many components of which many of it are fake. Uh, that is uh, affecting uh, our media landscape and media ecosystem. Last but not least, the technology companies, yes, uh, they are interested in business. Uh, they may not share the same values such as democracy, human rights and political pluralism. They are interested in the bottom line. Yes, they are you know, sending their people to attend meetings and discussions and, and they want to engage with governments and civil society and they do that. <coughs> but they have their company policy uh, and they will send their representative who will repeat the company policy. Uh, I think uh, across the board, you know, uh, fr uh, from all stakeholders, they are still not convinced about the genuine contribution mm. of the technology companies to, to, to resolve this problem because the fake news problem is real and it becomes problematic when fake news generates hate mm. against others mm. and, and that's something that we need to think about. Yeah. So on, on, the, on the first part uh, about a uh, technology comp uh, company because for example like in Cambodia uh, not only in Cambodia, but in other part of the world as well, uh, people you know, the the habit of uh, new consumption uh, is now through a lot through uh, social media. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, like uh, the case of Cambodia, uh, just a few uh, days ago, the, there were news about uh, an opposition uh, activist was murdered by police and disappeared, and murdered, but it turned out to be fake news. So, do you think? Uh, the technology company should be more responsible than any other, other three of the actors that you mentioned earlier. Yeah, so I think also to be fair to the technology company, I think first of all, one uh, needs to know how fast uh, we inform the technology companies mm -hmm. uh, that such an information is indeed fake. So, so who does the verification? Yeah. So we, we, we need to be clear. Uh, uh, is it an independent source that's constantly monitoring what's out in the social media and uh, verifying whether something, some content is true or not? Um, so that's one question. And the second question, should the technology company itself internally be verifying this information so that uh, it doesn't have to rely on a third party to mm -hmm. alert it. The second step of the process is once it's being alerted uh, that this is indeed uh, false information, how fast is the takedown now? That's the problem with the technology companies because they, uh, for situations like Facebook, they will say, look, we have community standards. We have you know uh, one, two, three, four criteria. and if we find that it is within our community standards, uh, we will allow this because you know uh, part of their community standards is to evaluate the contacts of the information that's being shared. But they find in many many cases uh, uh, when there's you know fake news is being identified, especially of some very significant concern that may affect harmony in communities, uh, you find that most people are quite unhappy with the speed in which the technology companies uh, remove uh, you know uh, harmful content that can you know affect the harmony in societies. Thank you so much, Jim, for coming to VOA and talk. Uh, discuss about Cambodian politics and also fake news here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to be here. <laughs>